Now, one of the main bugbears of students coming into A-level maths is their confidence with using fractions. Um, for some reason, all those ideas of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing fractions, uh, regardless of size, suddenly disappears. And you do need to be confident with fractions. Um, there will be a non-calculator element and to the paper. I mean, currently it's core one, and that is non-calculator, which means, well, for AQA it is, uh, which means that you do need to know how to work with fractions without a calculator, okay, by hand. So this video is intent on just going through some of the key basics and understanding exactly like, how do these things work and what can you do. So this should be a little bit of a vision, really, and nothing absurdly new. So this first question, write 72 over 78 in its simplest form. So you need to cancel down a fraction. Now, it's all down to your uh, confidence with using times tables. How good are your times tables? That's a question. Um, you might be feeling that at this stage they're not so good. Well, it's time really to build them up. Confidence in your... Uh, times tables and algebra skills will go a long way to making the next two years of A-level maths much more com comfortable for you. So first of all, 72 over 78, um, if you can't spot a larger factor, you can see that they're both even, so you can divide both of them by 2. Okay, so we can get 36 over um, 39. Having a bit of a lapse there, okay, 36 over 39, so that's dividing both top and bottom by 2. Then, 36 over 39, they're not both even, so we can't divide by 2 again, but we can see that they are both in the 3 times table, so divide both by 3, and we're going to get 12 over uh, 13. Okay, so 12 and 13 um, would 12 and 13 would be considered as co-prime. This means that uh, the highest common factor of both of them is one, which means that I cannot divide top and bottom by another other than one, which wouldn't really make any difference. So 12 and 13 is this fraction in its simplest form. So because you divided by 3 by 2 and then 3, you could have divided the top and bottom by 6 if you'd spotted that factor. Okay? So that's simplifying a fraction. Then we get on to adding fractions. Adding and subtracting fractions is, in my opinion, more difficult than multiplying or dividing. So the process of adding fractions is through cross-multiplication. It's called cross-multiplication because, effectively, there is a cross involved. First of all, it starts in the top left and down to the bottom right. So we have 2 times 8 makes 16. Then we have add, the plus, 3 times 9, which makes 27, and divide that by 3 times 8, the two bottoms multiplied together. So 3 eighths are 24. So you have 16 plus 27 is 43. Just thinking how I want to write this. 43 over 24, and that's it. Okay? So that is adding the two fractions together, 43 over 24, using this cross multiplication. The thing to remember is that you start with the top left, the bottom right. Okay? But from then on, it's a pretty straightforward process. Multiplying fractions, like 3 over 14 times 7 over 6, is a nice straightforward process. You just multiply the tops, 3 times 7 is 21, and multiply 14 by 6. So 6, 12, 24, 84. Okay, so 21 over 84. Um, now, in this, it works in very much the way that you would like it to work. That it would just be 3 times 7, 14 times 6. That's what makes 
multiplying fraction so straightforward because it works in the way you'd like it to. Now, 21 of 84 can be simplified. Okay? Um, you can divide top and bottom by 3, for example. The way that you can spot that is um, 2 plus 1 is 3, which can be divided by 3. 8 plus 4 is 12, which can be divided by 3. That's a little neat trick to figure out if a number can be divided by 3. So divide top and bottom by 3, you get 7 over um, 28. 7 over 28. Well, 28 is in the 7 times table, uh, so you can divide both top and bottom by 7, and you get 1 over 4. So 3 over 14 times 7 over 6 is actually 1 quarter. Okay, But make sure you know that you can multiply fractions like that. Then we've got dividing fractions. 5 over 6 divided by 2 over 3. Now, dividing fractions uses a neat little trick whereby we can turn it into a multiplication of fractions. So the process is, leave the left-hand fraction alone, turn the division into a multiplication, and flip the second fraction upside down. So use what we call the reciprocal. Okay. So dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Then you can just do 5 times 3 is 15, and 6 times 2 is 12. Of course, 15 over 12 can be simplified. Divide top and bottom by 3, and we get 5 over 4. Okay. So last but not least, uh, we're going to deal with a multiplication of mixed numbers. So the mixed numbers are 1 and 2 fifths and 2 and 3 quarters. So one way of doing this is to convert the mixed numbers into improper fractions. Improper fractions are fractions where the numerator, the number at the top, is larger than the denominator, the number at the bottom. So 1 and 2 fifths, well 1 is 5 fifths, so 5 fifths and 2 fifths make 7 fifths. Two and three quarters, well, two is eight quarters, eight divided by four, so two is eight quarters. Add on another three quarters makes eleven quarters. So we now have two improper fractions, which we then multiply in the way that I showed in question three. So we have seven times eleven is seventy-seven, and five times four is twenty. And then to write that as a mixed number, we think, how many 20s go into 77? Well, we have 20, 40, 60. So three 20s go into 77, with remainder 17. So we can write it as 3 and 17 twentieths. That's the mixed number. Okay. So this has pretty much been a fractions recap. All these processes I would expect you to know the most important, I would say, are the first four. Mixed numbers we try and shy away from. When I'm writing down a fraction, I will write it as an improper fraction rather than a mixed number. Okay, But it is useful to know the conversion process.